Okay, hi everyone, this is Marika from Perisphere and today I'm so excited because I have Fiona Rogers who is a women's health physiotherapist based in Queensland and who also runs uh, pelvicfloorexercise.com.au. I got that right, didn't I Fiona? You did, correct, yes. Excellent, excellent. I want to make sure. Um, so today what we're going to talk about is some of the products that Fiona sells in her business and how people can use them at home. Before we go into that, Fiona, I'd love it if you could just tell us a little bit about you and your experience and how you came to be running this online business. Cool. Thanks very much for having me, Marika. It's oh, great will. to have a chat today. <laughs> um, I came to this in a very roundabout way. Um, I could give my age away here. I've been a physio for 32 years and I first graduated. Uh, I graduated from UQ back in the early 80s and determined to be a sports physio. Um, and that's the path that I took for quite a m m number of years. Um, so I started off working at the Royal North Shore Hospital and that led me to a job with the Army. Oh, wow. So in the Army, yeah, I wasn't actually in, I was a, um, a civilian working for them. And so that led to lots and lots of orthopaedic and sports work. And then the opportunity came up to become a student supervisor at um, what was Cumberland College in those days, is now Sydney Uni. So I did that and then I took on the postgrad exercise and sports science, um, which back then was a postgrad, which is now the, the masters. And from there, I kind of took a slight different path, ended up, um, someone left. So I ended up as a second in charge at the hospital and then the head left to have a baby. So I, somehow I found myself as the head physio. So, <laughs> I, <laughs> so I kind of, you know, had quite a path. And, and then when we left Sydney, I, I was doing a little bit of private practice and then we had a baby. And we moved up to Queensland and um, I found myself working in the private hospital where my husband was working um, and I got thrown into maternity and uh, started to do a bit of postnatal stuff. Then I had another baby <laughs> and um, I realised then that uh, women's health was a, a pathway that um, really interested me and I kind of had that, why didn't people tell me what it was really like? Yeah. So <laughs> I, um, my, or our oldest daughter actually needed um, paediatric physio and her paediatric physio was the wife of another physio who I ended up working for um, in private practice and 18 years later, um, I still have an association with that practice. So throughout that time, I started to retrain as a women's health physio and done loads and loads of um, post, um, you know, post-grade courses. And so that's how I came to be a women's health physio, which I absolutely loved. And then about six years ago, six and a half years ago, the business pelvicforexercise.com.au became available uh, for sale. And my husband's background is in, uh, he was in medical research in the army, but he also did a lot of medical purchasing once he got out. So, but he had that, I had the, the women's health knowledge side. So it was kind of meant to be really. So we bought it and we now, with trepidation, <laughs> we started working together. <laughs> And uh, we yeah, so we married everyone, so it's all good. Yeah, we still are. We've just had our thirty first wedding anniversary this week. Congratulations! Um, so, thank you. So you know that's where we came from. Um, so I guess it was ideal for the two of us to to be working together. So um, and I actually now I've wound back my clinical work because I've just become too busy with this business. We also have help in the office, but. Um, yeah, no, I really enjoy it and I do a lot of education through, um, I get asked to do podcasts and talks and I go along to conferences and, and, um, and yeah, I just really enjoy the education. It's kind of getting back to the education side of it and we, part of even though, oh, sorry, sorry, no, just say, even though we, we sell, you know, the aim is to sell products. Um, I also see a big role for me through the business to be educating people and uh, particularly about pelvic floor issues and just making them more acceptable and, you know, the, getting those conversations going. So I'm quite active on social media as well. And we have a pelvic floor exercise Facebook page. I um, publish a tip of the day every day on there. I love little your little pictures. <laughs> <They're so cute. laughs> little graphics, they're really cool, aren't they? Uh, yeah, so I just sort of, um, I see that as a, another side of the, the business is just purely educating and, and um, you know, making people aware that they're, you know, it may not be a product that's right for them. It may just mean a little bit of advice for them to be changing a lifestyle factor, etc. So, um, yeah, that, that's, that's where we come from and, and why I do it. And I really love the fact that 
um, even 30 plus years later, I can still be involved as a physio in a slightly different way. So um, I do a little bit of clinical work still for a couple of specialists that um, uh, you know, I've worked with for many years. So when they've got patients for me to see, I pop into their clinics and see them for them. Just um, out of curiosity, because I've had a look at your website many, many times, Fiona, and there are, okay, how many products? I reckon there's hundreds, right? Mm, not, oh yeah, probably about a hundred, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So before you took over the business, the pelvicfloorexercise.com.au, as a physiotherapist, how aware were you of just the, num the sheer number and different types of products? Were you using a lot of them then, or has this really opened your eyes as to how much there is out there? No, well, I was using clinically quite a few of the products. Um, and I would like to say I don't recommend a, that everybody uses a product all the time. I mean, it's really, you know, what's appropriate and horses for courses, so to speak. But I was aware of most of them. Um, but yes, it was a huge learning curve uh, when we did take over the business. Mm -hmm. And we've probably doubled the range, I'd say, um, yeah. since we took it over. And I'm always looking for new products. But the, the premise of, the, of the, the business is we only will have um, quality products. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of uh, poor quality products out there. Mm -hmm. The other big thing is even the quality products often come with very poor instructions, uh, particularly when you're looking at things like vaginal weights, etc., because they were basically originally designed for the, um, the sex industry and the sex sites. So the, the actual instructions can be quite poor. So for all of our products, I've created um, information sheets that have been written from a clinical perspective by myself and so when somebody orders a product we include those instruction sheets for them so they get more out of the product and use it appropriately absolutely that's so, mm. that's so important okay so let's get a little bit of an overview then Fiona, of who shops at your website and yep. like a bit of a broad idea of the kind of products that you sell Okay, so we, we sell, we have customers and we have health professionals basically. So um, customers can be anybody out there who just can either Google um, and come across us from a Google search if they're looking for something in particular. Often it'll be, you know, uh, weights for pelvic floor exercises they, they Google or how to strengthen the pelvic floor or pelvic pain because that's another big issue as well. Um, or they're referred by their current health professional. We, um, we have a large number of uh, women's health physios and doctors clinics etc uh, on our books you know they're, they're uh, health professionals that um, order their products from us mm -hmm. so a lot of them will either so they will often order in bulk so yep. that they've got product to on sale in the clinic so if they're seeing someone and they think they need a um, you know a set of dilators they've, they've got them there or uh, we'll often we'll send them out brochures our product brochures and um, if they choose they don't want to um, stock product they can just hand the brochure and say here's the site, go and buy this. So then the customer will hop online and order the product um, in time for their next appointment. So it's a bit of a wide variety of people. Um, but I guess people come across as because they're, they're specifically Googling something for pelvic floor health. Um, and, you know, the other thing, apart from quality products, is that, you know, we look at mainly evidence-based products. So those yeah. for the layperson means that, uh, things that have actually had research done to show that they have an effect. Mm. Unlike a lot of stuff out there on Dr. Google that uh, we could say doesn't have an effect, but uh, yeah. claims that it does. So, yeah, there's lots yeah. of random articles out at the moment that we were chatting yeah. about recently. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when you come to our site, you can be absolutely assured that A, you're getting quality, B, um, we've got the, the backup knowledge as yeah. well, and I think that's why people trust us. Um, and you know, more often than not, if someone rings me, we do sometimes get customers ringing or emailing because they want some advice. Mm -hmm. um, more often than not, I'll sometimes actually talk them out of buying something after chatting to them and direct them towards someone who might help them better. Yeah. Or they might have been looking at a particular product and once we've had a chat, then, um, you know, I might direct them towards something else. So that's the other part of the website. There's a information section and there's a whole lot of pages on there which help people to decide, you know, is a product appropriate for me? If it is, what type of product would be appropriate mm. for me? So um, I don't think you'll find, if I say so myself, I find a site that's got more information on, you know, how to, to choose or, or um, there's a whole lot of research papers on there for the health professionals as well. So... Hopefully, you know, it's quite and, a round. And your email address, and you're very approachable. 
I am very approachable. (laughs) (laughs) um, You were talking before about dilators. So for people who don't know, so why don't don't you just quickly show us a few of your little things there, Fiona? Um, Would you want me to run through categories of products first? Yeah, that'd be great. Um, And then we'll we'll sort of run into it. So basically we've got um, feedback devices. We've got um, stimulation devices. So feedback devices, um, there are various types. They feed back to you whether you are doing uh, a correct pelvic floor contraction. Mm -hmm. Um, A stimulation device, they're just little TENS machines with specific programs set into them um, to help contract the pelvic floor for women who have a a very weak or or damaged pelvic floor. They can also be used for pelvic pain uh, as well. Then there's weights, which are aimed as strengthening devices. Mm -hmm. And we go through to more high-tech uh, things like the LV. Um, there's a number of, of devices on the, the market at the moment that attach to an app. So you download an app onto your phone and pop your device in and the two talk to each other and they give you little programs to do. Kind so uh, that's <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So especially in this tech age. Yeah. Um, and then on the other side, you know, we get a lot of women who, and men as well, who have um, pelvic pain conditions. So we have quite a number of devices like um, dilators and, and wands for, for massaging pelvic floor, uh, stim machines. We've got a lot of resources like DVDs and CDs that work on um down regulating the pelvic floor because there's you know the extreme of a weak pelvic floor that needs strengthening and then a very tight painful pelvic floor that needs down training or or letting go yeah Um, and then we we've got a range of lubes we've got um, a range of support garments the evb shorts that give good um, support to the pelvic floor and the, the pelvic girdle um and continent support devices as well which is another big one that listeners might be interested in um so for and we'll, we'll run through a few later but there's things like the the continent the um contiform that you can pop in that gives support to the urethra to help prevent leaking or lbl as a lot of people might know it as a light bladder leakage yeah. um and that's the other thing that we work as women's health and men's health physios work so hard against is to that it, even though it's common it's not normal for these conditions and Hallelujah. <laughs> Yeah. So, and then uh, for the health professionals, we've also got, you know, a lot of assessment tools and so forth. Brilliant. So, so, for, um, yeah. so really we're talking about this, this is a, a huge, this really could be uh, products for a huge number of people knowing as we know the statistics for, for incontinence prolapse. Yeah. Um, yep. I think prolapse is around one in two, one in three. Something like By that. a certain age. Yeah. 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 And then um, and incontinence depending on, Age, athletic, um, you know, what sports are involved in, birth, how many babies you've had, again, age, there's all these things. But we know, you know, yep. in terms of numbers, it's a lot of people yeah. potentially affected. Um, mm. So mm. we've so you've yeah. obviously got tools that can help give people feedback that the public floor is working well. We've got pub, we've got ones that give a little, I don't want to say zap. That's a bit of help. Term, yep. but a little bit of <laughs> And getting the muscle yep. contracting. And then for those that yep. are like this, you've got things that can help Absolutely. Um, yep. calm things down and help with pain. Yep, yep. So, you know, at, at the end of the day, um, leaking is, is um, common but not normal. Pain with sex is common but not normal. Um, and they're, you know, two, range, two ends of the scale and there is something that can be done pretty much. Well, every sort of pelvic floor dysfunction, um, there is something that can be done. There is a way of managing it. Absolutely. Brilliant. Mm. Let, let's, why don't we move on to the weak pelvic floor? Because, um, you know, obviously for me, I do a lot of work with postnatal population um, and quite a few women have a, have a weak pelvic floor. So what, um, and across the, you know, I think Fiona and I would yep. both recommend to everyone that an individual assessment is paramount and it's very difficult yep. to make recommendations on how many times to do an exercise and how strong to do it and et cetera, et cetera, yep. without an assessment. So, Let's just say right now, that's what we would recommend for everybody. But true, what, what true, are some of the, yeah, what are some but of the also, tools you know, be? not everybody has access to um, a, a well-qualified women's health physio. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's another reason for the website as well. So people have access through the internet um, and they, they can access um, tools from, from us. Um, yes, okay. So if you were looking 
Well, there are other reasons, obviously, uh, apart from birth for someone to have a weak pelvic floor. So, you know, we see women who've never had children, never been pregnant, and they've got a significantly weak pelvic floor. So things like genetics come into it. Uh, big one is straining on the toilet. Um, inappropriate exercise, very heavy, you know, women who've done a lot of heavy lifting throughout their lives. So there's a lot of um, factors. Uh, people who are overweight, so BMI is a big, big factor in, in pelvic floor um, strength and, and health. So, yes, let's say we've, you know, you, you've been identified that you have got a weakness um, in the pelvic floor. So we can do things from very simple, and I'll just hold a couple of these things up. One really simple little tool is the, the pelvic floor educator. So this is like a, um, the size of a, a tampon. It's a little plastic um, tool. That inserts into the vagina and obviously the stick is, is sitting out. So when you do a correct pelvic floor contraction, it sits up on the, the shelf of what we call the vata ani, which is the, the deep layer of the pelvic floor. When you contract it, it lifts and comes forward. So your stick actually moves downwards. Simple little trick, pop it in and if you're correctly contracting, it will do that. But the good thing is if you're incorrectly contracting, which a lot of women do, and that's a, a big thing to recognise, uh, and some research has shown about 50% of women do it bare down. So if you bear down as you do it, it's actually going to do that or it's going to shoot out. So you're pretty sure then that you're doing the incorrect action. Um, so that can be a really good feedback tool. It can also help you to um, see how long you're holding the contraction for because it's another, you know, that's what feedback is really good for. You might get the contraction and without realizing it just starts to fade out and then you go oh it's gone so things like this can help you see whether you're still holding it or whether the contraction has gone um, and so it can be a little bit motivating so that's the, probably the cheapest and easiest little feedback tool um do you know moving on do you know off the top of your head uh 32 dollars so um you know hang on i've just got one i prepared earlier <laughs> Oh, just while I think of it, do you deliver overseas as well? Uh, we do, yes. So, um, Not just Australians who get to benefit from this. No. And then um, we can go up to a device called the PFX2. So this is actually a sensor which you pop into the vagina and it, it registers pressure. And the pressure okay. shows up on this little dial. So let's pretend that's in the vagina and I do a little squeeze. Can you see that dial going yeah. up? Okay, so feedback wise, this is really good because if I'm contracting and holding there, but I start to let go, you can actually see it dropping down. So that encourages you to contract and hold that contraction. Nice. So if you're working on longer and stronger, you can use that. The other thing is um, you can actually use it with a, a hypertonic or a tight pelvic floor because they can work towards trying to let that pelvic floor go. So you can get feedback both, both ways. Um, the, a lot of people um, have misconceptions about devices like this. They say, oh, it can pick up abdominal pressure. Well, actually it can. So if you uh, have that in the vagina and you squeeze your abdominals, which is a, a thing that a lot of women do, um, it will pick up that pressure, but if you are holding like that, so this, this part's in the vagina, this part's out, just like our pelvic floor educator, when your pelvic floor muscles contract, it will dip downwards. Mm, so if you're pressure. using abdominal pressure, then it's going to literally shoot out of yeah. the vagina or go up like that. So again, that's one of the reasons that, um, even though this does come with good instructions, I actually have an instruction sheet that goes with this too. So that can be um, a really handy little tool. The mm -hmm. downside of something like this would be, um, you know, if you've got a couple of toddlers and a baby, you actually need a little bit of private time yeah. um, to lie down and do this. So, you know, you've often got to factor that sort of thing in. So um, doing uh, this sort of thing at times when you're not going to be interrupted, which then would bring us to things like vaginal balls. So um, Sorry, Fiona, just, just those other ones that you were using, would you always use them lying down then? Uh, this you would, yes. Well, yep. technically you could stand up, but no, you really need to be lying down with that. The educator, absolutely, you can progress to standing and you can yep. do things like coughing. When So some women are fine until they cough um, then or sneeze and they, they get a bit of a leak. So you can actually practice in the upright position, um, making sure that you're getting the correct contraction. Um, you may be able to do it lying down and then the added um, effect of gravity, et cetera, may 
mean that you're not as good in standing. But also doing things like a, a cough. You know, when you cough, does it dip down or do you shoot it out? So yeah. that's giving feedback that, hey, you're pretty good when you're thinking about it, but when you cough or sneeze, you forget to do that pre-contraction, which we need to give compression to the urethra, which stops you from leaking. So we were talking, um, you know, this is the weekend in terms of people exercising. And, you know, some yep. people, when they do a squat or a lunge or something, they bear down instead of lifting up. And now, obviously, you can't strip off and go into a gym with a uh, public floor educator yep. in and <laughs> But it might be something that people can do, do at home. <laughs> okay, yes, tell me, tell me about that. Yes, they can do it at home. Um, yeah, so that, that's where we have the more discreet. Now, obviously, um, you do actually need to, to have a bit of a pelvic floor contraction to progress on to weights. So, mm. for example, that's a um, what we call a Tinio Uno ball. And then we've got others. There's just different brands. Um, these are the Joy Balls. And they all come in ones and, and twos. So we start off with a smaller, lighter one. Now, you won't be able to see this, but if I shake that, there's actually a stainless steel ball inside there. So what it does, it sets up a bit of a vibration. Ah. And so um, Benoit balls would be another name that these are, are known as, um, the, the vibration. But they actually can be used for pelvic floor strengthening. So it actually it gives you feedback. You can feel that as you move around, you can feel that little vibration. It also um, helps to stimulate the pelvic floor muscles to contract, but it gives you that great feedback. So often what a lot of physios will do with that or something similar, which is the Aquaflex cones, but we'll talk about those in a tick. Anything like this, if you progress to function, you know, and there's that big thing out there now, it always used to be pelvic floor, pelvic floor, you know, strengthen, strengthen. And I am a big believer in that, um, just from my clinical experience, yep. in that we, we need to bulk that pelvic floor back up if it's quite weak because um, I actually haven't got a pelvic floor here with me, but the pelvic floor needs to be bulky so it sits in a good resting position to support your organs and it needs to be able to contract quickly to compress, help to compress the urethra so you don't leak, very basically. So if you've got a very weak thin pelvic floor, um, or particularly that deep layer of the pelvic floor, it's not going to provide that support. Mm. So the fascial elastic tissue that holds the organs up can stretch more and more, and then you end up, you know, we're talking prolapse. So there is very much a, um, an argument for getting training up the bulk in the pelvic floor. Mm. But we then want to make that functional. You know, it, if you can sit there and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze till the cows come home, but if it doesn't come in at the correct time mm. when needed, <clears throat> when I cough, when I lift the washing basket, when I land that box jumper at CrossFit or whatever I might be doing, then um, apart from increasing this, you know, you do your weights at the gym, you can use weights um, vaginally, but these are great feedback for that. So we can pop one of those in. Nobody needs to know it's there. Yep. And you go and empty the dishwasher, make the bed, or you go and do your Pilates class, or, you know, realistically, you, you can do any exercise with that internally. And you'll get that feedback. So if you're at that point of, you know, the, the brace and the lift, you're pushing down, that's going to pop out. So you're so not you can teaching people it. to lift and hold that in for... Like a whole class no. or an hour or anything. Oh, like God, that. no. Yeah. No, no, absolutely not. Um, and again, that's one of the um, misconceptions, mm. I think, about some of these devices. Um, and people go, oh, but, you know, it, it, it can pull, it's, it's too heavy. We're talking, we start with like an empty cone with the the, um, uh, the Aquaflex and we start with a five gram weight in there. Five These grams. you're looking at, yeah, these you're looking at about 30 to 40 grams and going up to about 80 odd with the, you know, the, the doubles. So, um, you know, if you're looking at the weight, I think uh, the average pessary weight's about 40 to 45 grams. Mm. Um, and then if you think of what a full tampon um, is going to mm. weigh as well, we're not talking much more weight than that. We're really talking about the more for that feedback into that functional, um, you know, getting that what we call the you know, neuromuscular um, pathways opened up again so the brain connects back with the pelvic floor and you get that feedback as to when to do that contraction through, you know, let's say you're on the reformer and you're pushing, you don't want that to pop out. That's the time that you want that pelvic floor to help contain the um, abdominal pressure. Also good for, um, I don't know what you find, but certainly clinically I found so many women who exercise just grit with their abdominals. Mm. And so that kind of overrides the pelvic floor 
and you know your pressure containment yeah so your, your, your pressure containment is incorrect um, so we want everything to work in sync together so you know they're a great little tool to teach that as well so I think there's a lot of that's application. That's a really good point I wouldn't have yeah. thought about it for that reason but that's actually yeah I think probably a very very good application. Yeah. I see that a lot so again, with fitness professionals just that bracing bracing through the abdominals so presumably absolutely. if they have that in it's just gonna keep shooting out right? Yeah, or they'll feel it sliding and yeah. so it makes them contract. Oh, well, that's the point I should be contracting. I'm doing the opposite to what I should, which then would lead me into talking about um, people with a hyper or too tight pelvic floor. Um, and you'd see that a lot with people who abdominally grip. But we'll talk about that in a little minute. Um, what, are um, the what are the double ones for, Fiona? Are they just to make it heavier? Yep, absolutely. So um, there's different brands. There's those. We've got the Lunar Beads, which I, I really like as well, um, the Uno one. So they're, some of them are slightly different shape. And, you know, people say to me, oh, my God, they look so big. <laughs> if you look at that, I always say to people, if you look at that um, and then think, you know, if you're sexually active, think of the size of an erect penis, you know, penis is going to be bigger. Okay, so Fiona, recently uh, we saw some articles that came up about Fifty Shades of Grey and people were talking about using it to using the ball, yep. the, the weights for improving their sex yep. life basically and they, yep. they yep. kind of um, went flying off, the, flying off the shelves. So do you want to tell us how, how they can improve your sex life? Well, that's the origin of these um, balls. They sort of, as I say, Benoit balls um, or geisha balls is another another term for them. So what they were first developed for was to improve, um, well, basically improve orgasms by improving um, strength of the pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. So it's well documented that a, a strong, healthy pelvic floor um, will give a much better um, orgasm because a female orgasm is literally rapid contractions of the pelvic floor yeah. so if you've got a weak floppy muscle it's not going to be able to contract as, as strongly so uh, that's, that's what these were developed for originally and then people realize that they could be used for actually strengthening the pelvic floor so um, I will confess I haven't seen the movies yeah. um, but uh, the application would be to strengthen pelvic floor um, with the aim to you know, improve um, orgasmic response. Mm. And that's a, a, a two-edged sword because some women who are already got a very tight pelvic floor mm. are going to have issues as, as far as that goes. But um, some other women who can have a reasonable pelvic floor but have not, haven't got great sensation so yeah. part of that can be, you know, a psychological response. Um, part of it can be some women find postnatally that their, their um, sexual response is, is quite diminished. And feedback with something like this can open up those pathways again and just get the, uh, you know, the brain and the pelvic floor um, and the pelvic nerves talking again and just raise that awareness. So, you know, there, there's multiple reasons why these can be used for multiple conditions. If yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, you know, there's all different brands. They all basically do the same. Um, the other one that is very, very popular um, are the Aquaflex cones. So these are a little bit different in their little plastic cones. They come in two mm. sizes. So I usually just sort of show, you know, in relation to the finger. I mean, that's the size of a, a medium tampon, basically. And then we go up to the larger one. So it's quite a, it's just a plastic cone. You can use that. And there's your little uh, removal uh, thread there. Again, it will give you feedback, but then what we can do with this is we can progress it. So it comes with a series of little weights from the yeah, little like you can probably transport drugs in there. <laughs> okay, well, you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> I'm joking, everyone. Yes. I'm joking. It just looks like a little I, I, <laughs> device. I, I regularly, so you just keys. put it onto there and, you know, you can progress it. Um, I regularly travel uh, with a suitcase full of these devices. So um, it's always interesting when I, I open up your, your kit. I wonder what the x-ray guys are thinking um, as it, uh, but I usually take the, especially with the vibrating ones, I usually take the, the um, batteries out. Batteries out. Why is this lady got a bag full of vibrators? <laughs> <laughs> right so yeah and then you know you, you pop that into the vagina again it's the weight of it you can feel so those are, are quite popular for the same reason they give that feedback um and you know there, there is a difference these are a lot smaller width wise for example than the balls 
So there is a little section on our website that um, shows you how to assess yourself to see whether this or this would be better for you. Because we're talking about um, the hiatal uh, width, which is the, the distance between the two sides of the pelvic floor. So yeah, so we've got, you know, there, there's a, a difference in size there. So the way you would uh, determine which might be better for you, if we have a little look at the pelvic floor, there's our outer layer. I'm just going to slip that off. And when I talk about the hiatus, it's this area in here. So we've got that deep, deep layer of the, the pelvic floor, which is the, the layer that all the organs sit on. So when we're looking at hiatal signs, it's the distance between there and there. So if you've got a, a, a strong, healthy, bulky pelvic floor, that's going to sit a lot closer than someone who's had damage or, or weakness on, on one side. So um, a smaller device may not sit in the vagina correctly. So for example, if you can't hold a tampon in, you're not going to do very well with Aquaflex. You're going to need something a bit bigger. Yeah. Um, and there is a little section on the website that teaches women how to check themselves. And it's basically sliding two fingers into, into the vagina. And if you can feel the walls of the vagina closing in on your fingers, then you're likely to be able to use the you Aquaflex. When you do the rest. When you do well at rest, you should be able to feel that, but yes. certainly with a contraction if it comes together. Yep. But with a contraction, if you, you know, your fingers are, are still sort of quite widely spread, you can't squeeze them together, you're definitely going to need something a little bit bigger if you're going yep. to use a feedback tool. Okay, yep. so that's just a little, little hint. So, there's little tips like that on the, um, on the website as well. So, that's like our uh, sort of strengthening range, and, and women who have a really weak pelvic floor or have difficulty contracting it we do have a, a range of um, stim machines which essentially are tens machines uh, but they've got specific programs in them to help stimulate um, the pelvic floor uh, or do muscle stimulation so uh, they the, the various programs um, you would generally be guided by uh, the treating health professional yeah. uh, but again there are instructions with it that um, will show you how to use them correctly and they can also be used for pain as well so there are settings for women who have uh, pelvic pain issues the other big thing is women oh, and men who have um, overactive bladders so we often use okay. the stim on it can be used either on the sacrum or down on the ankle on a continuous program with a nice gentle um, sensation, which actually runs up the same pathways as the nerves that come to um, the bladder. So it can quieten down the messages going to the bladder. So for people who, you know, um, constantly, oh, I've got to go to the toilet, they find one second and then oh, they need to go um, suddenly and urgently. Yeah and or may leak at that point as well, um, they may well have an overactive bladder. And there's certainly a whole lot of treatment options for that. One of them can be as part of that, and it's just saying it's the only treatment, but TENS machines can be um, effectively used. So, you know, it's a whole gamut that we um, have applications for. And then, you know, we've got, actually, before we move on to the, the pain ones, we've, we've got the... <laughs> the pelvic bar. So, you know, this is for oh. women who are right, you know, we, 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 we do from one end of the scale to the other. So, you know, that's uh, 300 and something grams. So that is a much, much heavier weight. So that you can sit into the vagina and do some weightlifting basically with the, wow. um, the pelvic bar. But, um, you know, you've really got to have a very strong, effectively um, used, you know, pelvic floor that can be effectively used there. So that's just a little aside. I'm just wondering how many people are listening to this and doing their pelvic floor because I... I'm hoping so. I can't help it. I'm listening to you talk about these things and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's really about getting that connection, you know, and, and can, you, can you contract it? Because, and particularly after childbirth, but, you know, um, with, with all the other factors we talked about being, you know, overweight, straining on the toilet, et cetera, yeah. we can lose that connection. So, you know, a lot of what we do in any form of strength training is those neuromuscular pathways. You know, it's not just about getting big and bulky. Yeah, yeah it's about that connection. So, you know, if, if talking today reminds a few people to do a couple of pelvic floor contractions so they get more awareness, then, you know, that's our thing. job is done. <laughs> Just, I talked a little bit before about high-tech devices. This is our little LV. Um, so it's a really lovely little device and that has accelerometers in it. So it, it, um, it detects the squeeze, but also the direction of movement. 
So the good thing about the, and it attaches to your, an app on your phone. Mm. Um, so that's a really good thing about that. That bit sits in. So just the little tail is, is sitting out. And if you, um, it, it, um, it detects your initial contraction and then it sets a little program for you. So as you're squeezing, um, it will encourage you to hold this little gem that comes up on the screen. It tells you to hold above this line, but it's specific to where you're at at the time. Oh, this is the but, my app, and I, but because I'm minus Oh, yeah, you've got yours there. <laughs> um, yeah, so when you squeeze, and but also what it does, it, it detects the direction of movement. So again, if you push down and out it will detect abdominal pressure but if you repeatedly do that because it detects that that is going down instead of up it will actually this is the good thing about this one it will actually tell you you need to see a women's health physio there are a number of these devices on the market now they're just sort of um seem everyone seemed to, to to bring them out to my knowledge this is the only one with those directional accelerometers to give you that that feedback could be wrong there, but I, um, I've looked at a lot of them and trialed a lot of them, and um, I really like the um, the LV. We're talking at the top end of the market price-wise here, but it's a very discreet um, little device, and it allows you, it progresses you. So you know, as you improve, it sets that bar a little bit higher, and all your stats are kept on the on your phone for you in your in your little app. And it reminds you, yeah, it done does today. Yes, yes. That mine's just saying to me, you need to plug, you need to recharge your LV. Um, yes. I think it's very interesting actually using the LV because obviously you can see when your endurance is, you can, you can tell when you're having a bad day, you're having a tired day or yeah. certain times of the day. You'll and see that happens. Yeah, that day. happens within your cycle and, and, and whether you're yeah. tired. Or something. Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. Then doing those fast because it does a, obviously the endurance, it does a power, the strength, like the yep. you know, yep. going as hard as you can. Um, but also doing those on off, which is actually I find extremely challenging because they're very yep. quick, very quick. They are on and off. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that that's it's really it's it's kind of fun because you've got something to look at and you've got something yep. to aim for, um, which I yeah. I think it's very useful. And that, that's what that feedback is, is all about, absolutely. So, and, you know, at that point, you know, say there are um, fast and slow switch fighters in the pelvic floor. So the slow twitch are the, you know, the workers that, that, that do the support work, but the fast twitch have to be able to switch on quickly. Yeah. You know, when you do those sudden coughs or you lose your, your footing or, you know, your kid just suddenly takes off across the, the run, yeah. run onto the road, you've got to be able to do that sudden movement. So you need to be able to recruit those quick ones to, to give you... Um, compression of the urethra under load so you don't leak yeah, yeah. awesome hmm. well i think that was a really good overview of um strength training thanks fiona um should we move on to um some pain we'll talk about sex and pain so people yep. who have pain with intercourse or pain with putting in a tampon any kind of insertion um and and just talking about some of the products that you you sell and yep. recommend Again, at that point, I would most definitely want somebody working with a qualified health professional because yeah. there's so many aspects to, to pelvic pain. Yeah. Certainly, we, you know, we, we've got um, devices that, that will assist, um, but there's usually, you know, the physical component, the psychological component, um, and we, we need to work on all of those areas and certainly pain science, um, which is you know, understanding how pain works and, and, and how you, the, the connection between the brain and the, and the rest of the body. But yeah, let's assume that we're doing, you know, all of that Absolutely. as well. And, and um, we have a range of dilators, vaginal dilators. So, um, you know, there's a number of brands of them and, and choice really depends on um, what your, your goals are. One of the very popular ones is this, what's called Femax. These are the two smallest sizes of the Femax. So again, let's just, you know, that's literally the, the size of, a, of an index finger, the smallest one. The reason I really like these ones is that they screw into each other. So one becomes the handle for the other. And then when you compress, you can turn it around. And the same thing for the, the bigger ones. So the idea of vaginal dilators is... Um, often with conditions like vaginismus, which is where the external, particularly the external layer of the pelvic floor, the, the ring of muscle around the, the vagina and urethra, is really um, won't allow any sort of penetration. So there's, you know, for ladies who can't um, have intercourse or who can't in, insert a tampon, this can be primary, so it can be a condition that you've, you've, you've got or it can be a condition that you develop. So some women, after a painful incident, or it can be birth or um, could be any incident, can actually develop vaginismus so 
Um, it, sometimes we see it through menopause as well, when the lubrication of the vagina isn't as great, estrogen's low, um, sex can become painful or inserting anything into the vagina can become painful. And so your body's reaction is for those muscles to, to tighten up. So there's a whole lot of applications there. But essentially we're looking at, you know, great, let's say this is our ring of muscle, is just um, working towards gently um, inserting larger and larger sizes so that we're getting a gentle um, stretch of those, those vaginal muscles and the, the pelvic floor muscles. Um, but that does have to be done in combination with, with down training techniques and stretching of the, uh, the pelvic girdle muscles, et cetera. So, um, but yeah, you know, we've got these, we've got, um, there's a range called the Amiel range. We also, and there's the, the Berman, this is the, um, the only sort of non-medicalized one. It's, it's sold as a, um, a, a sex device, but this, that's the smallest one. It's actually got batteries in there, which I don't have in at the moment. So, but that vibrates. So you can either use it as a vibrating, as a vibrator, um, or as a dilator or a combination. So, um, and that goes up to bigger and bigger sizes that you just sort of screw, screw on. So um, we do often recommend as um, women's health physios working with patients with pelvic pain, that they use some sort of um, vibration tool as well, like a, a clitoral stimulator or a, a very slim vibrator um, to help with the arousal process, which then allows penetration more easily. And that's, you know, we work with those with our, um, our dilators. So again, we've got a little range on the website under sexual health, yep. which are vibrators and um, those sort of devices, because a lot of people are a bit hesitant to go on to the, the sex sites because, um, you know, I'm quite used to going on there because some of our suppliers are actually those um, from so those um, areas. But, you know, I go on and I'm a bit overwhelmed. And, you know, if, if you actually have a condition and you, you don't want to be faced with a lot of some of the other stuff on, on those sites. I mean, those sites yeah. are fabulous. They've got their place. But if we're looking at it purely from a clinical point of view, I think people feel more comfortable coming onto a website like ours where they can purchase their dilators, but then, you know, there's that little section of, of um, really good quality uh, vibrators as well to help them um, with their recovery. And they don't have to be exposed to anybody... so potentially some of the, you know, confronting uh, yeah. things. In yeah, and there are some pretty confronting things on, on those, some of those other, well, all of those sites. So, um, yeah, it just makes it, I think, and it's a one-stop shop, I guess, as well. Plus, it, it, the ones that we sell are all very good quality ones. Can I just so, say that I've, I've had a look at the, on your website, and I think, you know, the vibrators and things that you sell too, they look a bit classy, Fiona, I have to say. They're kind of... Oh, yes, you know, you classy. Think? That's <laughs> what my aim was, classy. <laughs> have you got some there? Have you got any in front of you? Uh, so, for example, here's one of our um, really our best selling vibrators. It's called the Kerry from the Sparcom range. So, size wise, it's you know about the size of my hand, but it's really lovely. It's got a flat edge there and a, and a rounded edge there, and it's mm. quite thin. So, it can be used for clitoral stimulation, sort of externally or anywhere externally, but um, it's not as um, threatening as far as you know insertion goes because it is quite quite small. So a lot of these are, you know, they have the two sides to them to make um, stimulation externally around the clitoris and then internally on the, um, the G spot. We could have a whole conversation about that, but that's on the front wall of the vagina where the most concentration of nerve endings are because your clitoris is not just that little knob on the outside. Your clitoris is actually quite a large organ and it, it's in the shape of a, uh, so I often say to, to my ladies, like a wishbone from a, a chicken and it sort of sits so it the sides of it come like down. That. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's actually, uh, yeah, I'm looking at trying to get some of those 3D clitorises um, made or purchased from somewhere. I don't know if you saw them. There was an article about... Um, uh, sex education in France and they were using these 3D models of clitorises to teach. Okay. Um, yeah, anyway. I've seen pictures of it. And Watch I, this I, space, I yes. really interested. I'm trying it's to, so much bigger trying than to get hold. Absolutely. Mm. Um, and you know, it's the only organ in the body that's made purely for pleasure. And we have far more nerve endings in the clitoris than there are in the, the penis as well. And the penis has to do other jobs. So... There we go. Oh, yes. But then, you know, so for example, and these are beautiful um, phthalate-free um, silicon. They're, they're, they're lovely to, to um, you know, to the touch. 
and they come with um, all of these really good ones come with a, a variety of um, vibration functions so you know in the old days you turn the vibrator on and it, or you turn it off and that's all you got these days um, they have uh, different patterns um, of vibration so it's not just an on or off it could be a build up or it could be a da -da 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 and, and or you know there's a whole lot of um, and you can just work through them and find the one that actually works for you personally because everybody's different yeah. and um, some women we often find postmenopausally as well that women need a lot more intense stimulation of the clitoris for um, arousal and, and orgasm so again that can be a great place for um, a, a vibrator like this to to help with that process as well and you know in reality for some women something like that is far preferable than a clinical looking vaginal dilator Stick. So yeah. um, some ladies can go straight to a, a device like this yeah. and, and use it um, for, uh, you know, arousal and then gentle insertion to get used to that muscular relaxation and, and you know, getting over the fear of something being inserted into the, the vagina. Beautiful. So, and, you know, then that does bring me probably to the, the range of lubes that we, um, yep. that we sell. Um, so... Basically, you've got water-based lubricants, silicon-based lubricants, and oil-based lubricants. Mm -hmm. So we've got quite a, a range. Um, we try to stick to the more natural ones and, uh, you know, the ones that, that we feel are, um, you know, work really well clinically. Um, so we've got things like the Yes range um, that comes in water-based and oil-based and various sizes. And we have the beautiful Olive and B, uh, one which has been developed by an Australian physio yeah, for Osterstock over in, in WA. Um, oh, is that, where, is that in WA? Oh, sorry, in South, South Australia. Australia. Sorry, Claire, yeah. sorry, she's in South Australia in Adelaide. I'd, say I'd go knock on her door if she was in WA. <laughs> two, two ingredients um, organic beeswax and extra virgin olive oil. Oh, organic. Wow. Okay. And it's just, it's a beautiful product and great for um, all sorts of um, conditions, uh, very good for vaginal um, moisturising and, you know, particularly postnatal, post well, postnatal ladies, but also postmenopausal. Sometimes that sort of vaginal um, dryness and itchiness um, or vulval in particular, beautiful for that. Claire tells me that people use it for their baby's bottoms to stop um, nappy rash. People have used it as a heel balm, a lip balm, you know, there's a whole range. So your tube is going to do quite a few things for you. Um, and then we've just started stocking the Uber Lube, which is the um, recognised as the world's best silicon lubricant. Mm -hmm. um, and they also talk a lot about using it for chafing, you know, for runners to stop chafing, oh, yeah. for swimming to stop, you know, so triathletes use it a lot. Apparently you can use it on your hair as well, as a, you know, to stop the frizz. But it's just, it's a beautiful, I'll just get a little bit of a pump out there. Whoops. Um, just a beautiful, silky, lovely feel. And it doesn't leave any residue um, and it, um, it doesn't sort of stain the sheets or stain your, your undies, etc. if you're using it. And that will just keep, keep on keeping on, as, you know, because it's silicon and yep. it will keep that. So for the, um, if you're using uh, it for intercourse, it allows that nice gliding action. It won't dry out. Um, depending on the pH of your vagina, um, water-based um, and oil-based lubes can, well, the oil-based will, will do the similar job to the silicon, um, but it will get absorbed. The, um, the water-based ones will often become absorbed in the vaginal tissues if they're very very dry so you know they're fine for a short time but if you're looking at a um, you know longer time often the silicon based can be better oil based aren't um, compatible with condoms so you really have to look at things like that um, if you're looking using condoms for um, contraception um, but yeah there, there's a range of, of um, lubricants with a, a range of applications and um, you know I think a lot of people are a bit scared of lubes in some ways um, or think that they've failed if they're needing to use a lube but it's it can just enhance um, as far as sex goes it can enhance things beautifully and at certain times of our hormonal um, uh, you know path through life you know we need that bit of extra lubrication it's funny, I actually contacted Yes and, and they sent me a whole lot of samples. So yep. all, <laughs> you might laugh at this. All the pregnant and postnatal ladies who came to my classes for about two weeks all went home yep. with a little, um, a free pack, uh, you know, a little 
we'll pack up yep. well, one of each actually so they can yep. the water give and, them a try yeah ah, yeah they all went home with their little packs of lube um which mm. everyone kind of giggled about but you know they all took it and said oh yep. happy to give it a go Yep, and give it a go, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it, there are certainly lots and lots of lubricants out there. Um, so you just have to really read your labels because a lot of them have um, mm. additives in them. A lot of them are petroleum-based, which is not good for, you know, mucosal tissue, which is what your, your vagina is. Um, and, you know, you, you just need to be careful, I think, with what you put, inside put into you. your vagina, you know, or, you know, if we're talking anally into the anus as well. So, uh, yeah, that's why we're very careful about what we choose um, as far as well, any of our products go. I know, it's, I know it's hard to say, but would you say that most of the ones in the supermarket are full of, you know, some of those other things that you talked about, the petroleum? And um, the from Windy. my experience, yes, yes. You used to be able to buy silk in the, the supermarkets, not available in Australia anymore, but that would probably have been the only more more natural one so um yeah i think and you know some people use things like um uh, coconut oil etc so um can use it for everything. you know there's pros well you can and there's you know there's pros and cons for 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 all of them so um yeah one of the other or two of the other things i'd really love to show you because they're very applicable to a lot of ladies um, and they're what we call our continent support devices. Oh, yes. yes, perfect. So um, one of them is um, the Conti form. Now that's the large size. It comes in large, large, medium, and small. Um, and the starter pack comes with one size of each, so that you can test them all out. But basically, what this does is you. Now my fingers are a bit slippery from using that loop. Um, <laughs> you fold it and you, you slide it in and it actually, this front bit, that goes on the back wall of the vagina and this goes on the front wall towards the pubic bone. So it springs open inside and what this does, it provides support to your urethra. Okay. So if this is my urethra, what, what happens with a lot of ladies, if their pelvic floor and the, the fascial tissue isn't um, capable of, of contracting well enough to help compress it, so when you cough <coughs> like that, that should compress and compress the urethra. Um, what will happen is the urethra can either swing back or open up a little bit. And that's mm. where you get your little bit of leakage or your light bladder leakage. So what this device does, it sits in the vagina there and provides support to the back of the urethra mm. and prevents it from opening um, or swinging backwards when you cough or sneeze or jump and that can prevent you from, from leaking. So these can be, um, you know, instead of wearing pads all the time, um, it, it can be a good device as an interim thing whilst you're training up your pelvic floor. We often find too with some women they're doing fine and the only time they leak might be when they play netball or when they play tennis or they go for their run. So it's a great option compared to going off and having a, you know, a sling put in, which is you know, for the sake of just being able to run or, or play tennis. Pop one of these in, um, and, and then remove it after you've played your game. Yep. So they can be a really, really good um, little device. Mm. Um, and the other one I really love is this one because it saves a lot of women's dignity. This is more for a rectocele. So um, if the the back wall of the vagina or the rectum is pushing into the vagina, so it's a, a prolapse of the back wall it can actually prevent you from um, defecating properly. So you can be straining on the toilet, pushing, and the bowel motion goes down into the, the prolapse, not out through the anus, ah. if that makes sense, okay? So what we do with this little device is we insert it into the vagina and that holds the back wall up. So it pushes that prolapse back up and straightens out the rectum. So it makes it more comfortable for you to... to um, defecate so it's for those women who find and unfortunately a lot of women find they have to support the perineum or even stick a thumb into their vagina to support um, to allow themselves to defecate $30 and you stick this into the vagina and it would you know and for people um, it's got that extra length on it so for people whose dexterity isn't as good um, it can be really helpful, but it's just so much more pleasant than having to put yeah. a hand or a thumb into into the vagina there. So that's, um, I've, you know, I just find this a brilliant little tool. Um, and that's the Femmes, right? That's the Femmes, yeah. So it comes with a little pouch. You just wash it, pop it back in the pouch, and you, know, you can carry it in your handbag if you like. No one needs to know that you've, mm. that you've got it there. Yeah. So, you know, there are lots of options 
rather than just putting a pad on it, as far, you yeah. know, using something like this. Um, and, you know, you can be using a device like that whilst you're, you're trying to regain your pelvic floor health. Yes, and I think that's something that we obviously are all trying to achieve is getting people back to doing things that they love. Um, that's right. Rather yeah. than putting up with and putting up with symptoms or stopping um, doing absolutely sex, because you know act, and you know when you're active you're going to be getting that that general muscle strength anyway. But the yeah. big thing is it's it's the whole mental health side of it. Oh. You know, a lot of us find we have to, we need that exercise to maintain you know hormonal levels and our, our mental health levels. And a lot of women stop exercising because they're, they're leaking. So there's this whole snowball effect of, you know, their, their mental health can decline. You can then put on weight and BMI or being overweight is an independent risk factor for stress <laughs> and constant and prolapse. So we can kind of get caught up in this, yeah, and we just want to break that circle. So if we need a device to help us do that, then, um, you know, that, that's basically why we exist. Yeah, that is absolutely brilliant. That is brilliant. Thank you so much, Fiona. I think that's given us a really Thanks good overview me. of um, the products available. And I've certainly learnt of a few, a few new ones. I'm thinking, ooh, maybe I should get on and get my credit card. Have a look. No, that's fantastic. So if anyone um, wants to get in contact with Fiona, what's your email address? Our email is info at pelvicfloorexercise.com.au. Um, so if you just hop onto the website, you'll yep. see um, contact us on, on there, shoot us an email and, um, you know, I'll do my best to help you. Or have a little look around the website and, and you know, look at some of the information on there. Yep. And join our Facebook page because you'll get my tip of the day every morning at seven o'clock. Yes, and it's got really, really cute little pictures and it, and it's a good reminder. It does. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, Fiona. I really appreciate your time. Oh, lovely. Thanks for having me, Marika.